Welcome to the You're in Charge podcast, prioritizing your self-care without sacrifice. I'm your host, Heather Dumas, healthy lifestyle strategist, owner and founder of HD Transformations Coaching Company. I am passionate about helping you juggle all the balls and look and feel like a badass doing it. How'd you sleep last night? Do you sleep well? Do you fall asleep easily? Do you stay asleep? Or are you, is your brain going a million miles an hour every time your head hits the pillow? I know a lot of us struggle with sleep and it can be a whole bunch of things. It can be hormones. It can be stress. It can be what you ate, what you didn't eat, when you ate, all the kinds of things, right? There's a lot of different things that affect our sleep. And I want to share with you a few myths that you may be thinking are are factual, that maybe are affecting your choices with your sleep habits and hopefully help you to sleep better tonight and every night from from now on. So the first one the perfect amount of sleep, right? We hear you have to get eight hours, you have to get seven hours, you have to whatever. Everybody's different. Everybody is different. Um, But women do need more sleep than men. And we do tend to sleep a little bit deeper. We tend to fall asleep faster if we don't have a million things on our mind. Understanding your body, understanding, you know, how it works and figuring out your circadian rhythm is critical. I know for me, the sleep cycles I go through, if I wake up before 6 a.m., it's generally easier for me to get out of bed. If I wait until like 6, 15, 6, 30, I have a much harder time getting out of bed, which seems really weird, right? It seems like you should, the longer you sleep, the easier it should be to get out of bed. But it's because my body goes back into a sleep cycle around about 6 a.m. The first part of your sleep cycle is a very deep sleep. So I know for myself, if my eyes pop open at 545, as much as I want to lay there and sleep a little bit longer, I know I'm going to have a much better morning (laughs) if I just get my ass out of bed. The other thing is, is if you are a sleep or, or sorry, if you are a night owl or a morning person, that can drastically affect how much you sleep and when you sleep. So if you're a night owl and you're trying to go to bed early because you have to get up early the next day, you're going to lay there and toss and turn and stare at the ceiling and think all night long, unless you've set yourself up, which I will talk about that in a bit. If you are naturally a morning person and you, I think morning people seem to have it better because they can just get out of bed. I don't know. Maybe you're naturally a morning person, but you're really tired and you just want to sleep in. So you decide you're going to sleep later. You'll notice you're groggy all day. So really just like all the other things, you have to know your body. You have to know your brain, you have to know how you function and how you function best. Easiest way to do that is to pay attention to it, which we, most of us don't. The second myth is that naps are for toddlers. (laughs) Naps are not for toddlers. Naps are amazing, especially like a power nap of like 20 to 30 minutes is incredible for, you'll find that it's better than your 3 p.m. espresso run. It's better than your, you know, Snickers break or whatever at three o'clock in the afternoon when you start to get a little bit tired, lay down for 20 minutes. And even if you don't actually sleep, it's amazingly good for you just to lay down, close your eyes for 20 minutes. Um, It helps your mood. It helps your alertness. It helps your performance. And interestingly, um, NASA had did a study and on sleepy military pilots and astronauts and found that a 40 minute nap improved their performance by 34% and alertness by a hundred percent. So I know you're not an astronaut, but if you need to be alert, if you need to be focused, um, and you're tired, lay down, sleep, listen to your body. Um, it's much better for you than the caffeine. Even though I love me some coffee, a nap is better for you. <laughs> have you noticed or have you felt that it's harder to sleep on a full moon? If you have, you are correct. We actually take a little bit longer to fall asleep and we sleep a little bit less on a full moon. I'm sure that goes back to our cave people days when we probably needed to be more alert, you know, for creatures that are crawling around in the night during a full moon. But <laughs> Also, deep sleep gets decreased as well during a full moon. And if you are cycling, um, your menstrual cycle often will sync up with the moon. And so you may be ovulating at the same time as the full moon, which means your body wants you to be out and about and alert. So if you're finding, maybe you haven't even paid attention to it, but if you've found that, um, it's biology, (laughs) you're welcome. But again, having a good sleep practice or hygiene, um, a good way to get your body into that restful place is the key to fixing that. Another myth, you cannot catch up on sleep. I know, sorry. It is not like a bank where you can like 
take, run it down, run the balance down low and then fill it back up again on the weekend. In fact, that's one of the worst things you can do for yourself. You really should wake up and go to bed pretty much at the same time every single day. Yes, that means on the weekends when you want to sleep in to catch up, it's actually better for you to get your ass out of bed. <laughs> Plus that if you're not sleeping during the week because you have so much to do and then sleeping in on the weekend because you're so tired, maybe if you went to bed during the week and then got up on the weekend and just evened out that productivity time, you would feel better. I mean, it does help if you've like had a really late night, obviously it helps to like sleep in a little bit, but I'm talking about long-term. I had one client once where she would stay up till one, two, three in the morning during the week working. And then on the weekend, she wouldn't get out of bed until noon. And she was trying to figure out why she couldn't lose weight. She was trying to figure out why she felt so terrible. That had a huge role to play with it. And I'm telling you, sleep is more important than diet. It's more important than exercise. I know you, that's probably weird for me to say that because I love some, I'm a huge promoter of exercise, but if you're not sleeping, none of that matters. Your body will hold on to body fat. It will not build muscle. Your brain won't work, all of it. And then we all know about, about blue light, right? We know that it wakes us up. It tells our body that it's morning time and to be alert. Even if you are wearing blue light blockers, okay, the stimulation of what's on the screen emotionally, mentally can really negatively affect your sleep. So you're supposed to, supposed to, which we don't always follow the rules, but an hour before bed, try something else. Wine is not the other option. Okay. Alcohol actually causes you to have worse sleep as well. There's a lot of things that really negatively affect your sleep. I know it seems dumb to say like you need to have a bedtime routine and you need to, but we do it for our kids for a reason, right? Because they're growing, they're developing. Well, your brain still has to work and it's still fixing itself at night. So you need to have a bedtime just like your kids. <laughs> And you need to make sure that you're not getting the blue light, that you're not waking up at all random hours, that you're not eating before bed. Um, that can really ne negatively affect your sleep as well. So if you would like to go deeper into this and you would like to sleep better, I am hosting a workshop coming up about sleep and how to make sure that you're falling asleep quickly, you're getting good quality sleep, you're staying asleep, and that it's doing its job without having to sleep 10 hours because ain't nobody got time for that. If you want to sleep 10 hours and your body needs 10 hours, we'll talk about that too. Um, we'll talk about learning how to figure out your own circadian rhythm, which foods actually help you sleep better and which ones don't. That's a thing. So lots of, lots of stuff all about sleep. It's coming up. I would love you to join me. So if you want to just DM me the word workshop, I will send you the information or you can comment it or whatever. I would love for you to join me. It's going to be a great interactive fun time where we're going to really really make a good plan for you to feel good and take advantage of your sleep time. We like to, we like to multitask, right? Well, your body likes to multitask and likes to sleep and do a whole bunch of other shit at the same time. So please join me. I would love to have you help you sleep better. So hopefully I will see you there. Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember you're in charge. You're the only one who can create the life and the body you desire. You and only you. I'm here to guide you. I'm here to cheer you on and occasionally to give you the kick in the ass you need to make it happen. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. If you found value in today's episode, please hit subscribe. It'll bring all the newest episodes to the top of your list. You won't have to worry about it. One less thing. And I would love for you to share it with your most stressed out, frazzled friend. She needs it even more than you do. If you have a question or a topic that you'd like me to cover, reach out, shoot me a message on any of the socials or directly on my website. I would love to hear your idea, your question, and I'm always looking for new ones. Until next time, keep being the badass you are. And remember, you are in charge. <laughs>